Hi guys and welcome back to another video. Today's video is going to be the first of a mini series that I'm going to be doing over the next probably two to three weeks depending on how much time I have to film. But today is gonna to be the first one where I'm gonna be talking about our curriculum picks. And I'm going to go ahead and say that a lot of our curriculum picks are also things that I'm kind of thinking about and still contemplating. So what you'll be seeing in the next coming weeks are not things that are 100% solidified, but they are things that we're thinking about using in our homeschool. But as you can tell from the title down below, today is all about preschool. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys what I have put together so far for our upcoming preschooler. So preschool, I love, love this season. I've been asked multiple times, however, what my favorite kind of experience or season has been when it comes to either motherhood or homeschooling and things like that. And I always reply, like my favorite season is the season we're currently in because every single year, every single honestly month sometimes is a new season and it's a new, it's really a new time and experience for growth, not just academically in our homeschool, but also relationship wise as well. And every year is my favorite year just because again, we're getting to experience our first together. Now, if I jumped ahead and once I see my homeschooling season through completion and after all of my little ones have graduated, I think I could look back and maybe pick out a favorite, but right now my favorite is just like the season that we are in. So with all that being said, however, the preschool season is a special one, especially as a homeschool mama. For me, it's always the time where I get to intentionally pick out what I wanna do with my up and coming little school age children. And I love that. It's a really good opportunity for me to be really tune in to what my little preschoolers are interested in, try to create something that I know they will love, try to find things that I know that they love, based on their learning styles, the things that they're interested in and things like that. So I love the preschool years, again, as a way for me as a mama to start thinking about what are we gonna do to spend intentional time um, really just growing together in the little years. And you'll see that in some of the upcoming choices I'm gonna be sharing with you today. But for me, a lot of it is going to be based off of just like the fun little things. Nothing is a formal curriculum. It's just kind of all pieced together. If you saw my last video, I was sharing a little bit about my preschooling journey and kind of how I started and where I am now when it comes to preschool curriculum. I started out again with my, just to give you a brief synopsis of that last video, I started out doing a very formal preschool curriculum for my father's world. Loved it, loved it, loved it. And then we kind of did this similar type thing with my second one while also adding and supplementing and all the things. But with this one, with my third time around here, we're just focusing on a lot of the things that she's interested in, things that I know she wants to do, and just a few little things that I found that I thought she would love. Anyway, I am gonna go ahead and grab the camera. We're gonna turn it around so I can give you an in-depth look at things I have intentionally laid aside for my upcoming preschooler. So my little preschooler kind of already knows most of her letters as far as recognizing what they are. So the first thing that we're really gonna be focusing on probably in the summer here and up and coming is when she does want to sit down and learn, this is what we're gonna be kind of pulling from. Uh, this is a great big book of math, a little preschool version. I ended up getting it off of thrift books for like $4.99, so very affordable. And I'm going to see if I can find everything I'm talking about linked down below. However, I'm gonna be honest and say I'm not 100% sure if they're still in print, but if they are, I will link it. I just thrifted quite a bit of her things this time around, and I'm also utilizing things that I already had on hand, and then there'll be a new resource that I'll share with you at the end. One of the reasons why I liked this, especially for preschool, is it is bright and fun and colorful and interactive but I like all the little pictures. Like there's some challenges, there's some critical thinking things in here, there's games, it is just so much fun. She can practice counting, uh, number matching, pick things out. And again, I bought this in not perfect condition, so it does have like scribbles and stuff on a few pages, but it doesn't bother me that much. So um, estimation game, just some counting, um, say how many, again, matching. And it's just so fun, especially for the preschool years, just for, engaging them in conversation. So if you guys are new around here, my preschooler has a little bit of a speech impediment. So I wanted to find things and you'll notice that throughout the theme of what I'm gonna be showing you. And I'm gonna be telling you exactly how I'm doing it in case you also have a little preschooler, again, with a little bit of a speech impediment who might need some extra help. Or if you want some things that are interactive to um, spark, like spark conversation with them, especially open-ended questions where they need to reply and answer back. So this is a really, really fun book for doing that because 
because you can ask them questions. Um, you can, there's just so many fun games. And so I wanted to find something game oriented and just again, for them to uh, practice their speech. So for a challenge, put out eight toys, now make another set of toys with one fewer than eight. How many toys would there be? Um, and so she can either do that challenge with her little counters, which I'm gonna show you all of her hands-on things and um, how I have those here in a little bit. But this is just so much fun. And again, it's a good way to spark that conversation. And I love that. So this is again, so much fun. It's just called The Great Big Book of Math for the Preschool. The second math resource I got, again, it came from Thrift Books. I wanna say this is maybe $5.99, so $6. Um, and this is Family Math for Young Children. I loved this. I, f I don't honestly remember where I first learned about it, but I was looking for it. Again, it's not in perfect condition, but that's okay. Um, I got this because this is almost a 100% more hands-on preschool type math where you really are learning together as a family. So it's parents and kids enjoying learning math together. It's doing activities, playing games. It's using beans, buttons, pennies, and toys to solve math problems. Um, shapes, exploring shapes and geometry. It's talking and working with others. It's estimating with numbers and sizes. It's learning how math connects with real life. So uh, this is an older book. And again, I will try to link it down below if I can find it. If it's not still in print, I'll link the website that I got this one. And if they have any more on their website, I will try to link that below as well. But this is not that bright and colorful thing. So this is going to really be for you as a parent uh, to work with the math concepts for your children. But I absolutely love this. It's really taking those little preschool years, giving you so many incredible ideas. You have sorting spaces for sorting things. You have your hundred chart, your bar charts. Um, so this is gonna be an example of what a lesson would be. So your first lesson would maybe be nuts and bolts. So you're gonna need some nuts and bolts of different sizes and pairs that fit each other. So you're gonna put nuts and bolts together. And for her, it's wonderful for fine motor practice. So if your little ones are not quite ready to write, but you're going to get them ready to prepare for that in the upcoming years, then this is a wonderful, a wonderful option because it's going to give them a lot of that fine motor practice between counting things out. Again, the nuts and bolts are fine and counting activities and everything like that. But you're going to be using just a lot of real life things to, to learn math. A lot of wonderful, wonderful concepts for the early years. Again, it's full of activity. So if you want something to help you be intentional, this is a great, a great resource to, I don't know, kind of make that learning come to life when it comes to math. Now this, again, is going to be for when she wants to sit down and do some learning with mommy. We'll open this up and have some fun just doing some learning games. Whereas in this is gonna be the hands-on part. So I think the two will balance each other out. You have bright and colorful. You have a guide really for me as a mama to help make that learning come to life and solidify um, different concepts and stuff for, for this one. And this is honestly activities that my olders will enjoy doing with her as well. Um, but I love it. And I thought this was a well, really well balanced thing. So for her letters, this is a really, really fun one. I know this is a really popular one as well. So I'm sure you've probably seen it, but I love this as well because even though she does recognize all the letters, this is great practice for her to trace and practice actually what do the letters feel like. So this is wonderful and wonderful. And she loves doing the pop open things to show you know, what letters stand for. This is a wonderful one. She has this one and she also has a numbers one for this one as well. But for her, she prefers she prefers doing the letters. So I have the A is for Apple. It's the trace and um, the tracing book. And then the other thing I'm gonna be using with her if she wants to, and she has already done this a few times, is when she wants to do things like big brother and sister. Um, we are currently using the McGuffies. We will open this up and this is a huge part of why she has already recognized and knows all of her letters is because she wants to be like big brother and sister. So she gets her little brown book out and gets so excited and sits right up there next to mommy when we're doing our reading and then we'll pick out different letters. Right now she's still working on recognizing the lowercase but she knows all of the uppercase. And it's all just from like wanting to be like big brother and sister. We pull out the little McGuffies primer and she recognizes the letters. And then later she can go into like picking out the letters, even though we're not really blending anything out. She likes picking out the, the letters. It makes her feel really big. So <laughs> that is really the course is mostly math. Um, again, a letter recognition, different concepts within the math book as far as matching and all of those little things. Those are the four intentional type books. Again, it's very simple guys. Everything like these two I already had, so they were not new purchases. And then these two books, I did get thrifted um, for the equivalent of with shipping is under $12. So 
that's the four main books. Now I wanted to show you guys something that I'm really excited about that I kind of made specifically for her. Let me grab it real quick. So this is what I'm really excited about. This is the Little Years Volume 1. By the time I'm complete with this, there should be about four to five volumes, depending on what I decide to do with that fifth one. I wanted to make something that was extremely, extremely specific to exactly what it was that my little preschooler loves, which is all the woodland animals. And every volume I think is going to have something different. She also likes farm, like farm life and farm animals. So I put one page of that in here to kind of jumpstart into uh, the volume two. But this is volume one. Yeah, I was just really excited to create this for her. I had so much fun thinking about things that she would just love. And I don't know, I was just, I just, I just love putting this together. So we have a little poem called The Little Years Poem. And if you have little ones that also have a little bit of a speech impediment or a delay, poems and songs is one of the best ways that we can teach them new words, pronunciations, and vocabulary. When I put things into a song form, she learns the words so much quicker than if I would just say, repeat after me and like do words practicing that way. So this is a wonderful way. I ended up putting a days of the week song in here, months of the year, that they can be sung to different common lullabies um, and little kid songs that you already know. And then again, the little year's poem kind of sums up the whole essence of why I kind of created this a little bit um, specifically for her. So those are the two things that we're going to really be focusing on is again, the poem, learning the new words, memorizing this. And you'll be amazed at how fast little ones can actually memorize big things like this. <laughs> That's so quick. Um, so we had that. And then the beginning starts out very, very simple. It's just um, the first volume you're only going to be working on recognizing and writing the first 10 letters, the first 10 numbers, and then your shapes. That's going to be the core. And then some uh, beginning writing. So it's very, very simple and basic when it comes to what we're going to be introducing her to formally in the next week or so. And then we go into big and small, uh, which one is biggest, which one is smallest. She's going to be learning size comparison. So what's the biggest, smallest, which one can fly? What is the fluffiest? You know, you, what I wanted to do with this is start out with a couple of questions. So this is kind of scripted, but also if you have little ones who do have a speech delay, I would suggest asking them as many questions as possible. Like which bird looks for little bugs in the tree? It could be the woodpecker. Which one is carrying an acorn so they can say squirrel and things like that. So you can ask however many questions you want. You can be like, how? let's count the animals together. Like things like that. Just something that really sparks their um, curiosity first, but also their ability to want to speak and answer the questions. This is why I created this page. This is called the Let's Go on an Adventure. <laughs> Ask your little ones the following questions. And this is what I really wanted to focus on when creating this is to help her like become more fluent in answering questions completely. So what color is Oliver's shirt? So she answer that. What do you think Oliver is looking at? What shape do you spy on the binoculars? At this point, she can go back here and be like, well, let's look to see what shape we see. It's a circle. Um, and then we have how many steps did it take for Oliver to get to his canoe? Everything you're gonna be counting is gonna be under the quantity of 10 because that's what the first volume is gonna be focusing on. So there's 10 steps. Um, what would you like to name the baby duck? So she can come up with a little fun name for the ducks. How many babies does a mama duck have? What adventure do you want to go on? And then down here, I have just a little note on language development. As toddlers observe a page, they begin to associate words with the images they see. This helps in expanding their vocabulary and language skills. So adults can engage toddlers in conversation about what they observe, which further enhances language development. So use this page and then the following page to ask even more engaging questions. So what I wanted to do in this page is I wanted to, again, create something that you can ask a lot of questions, a lot of questions for. So how many light bulbs are on the tent, um, how many fish are in the bucket, how many deers do you spot on the hill, how many birds in the sky. You can ask what shape is the tent. You can ask what shape is the map, like the little segments of the map, what colors, um, and just all kinds of fun questions um, while making that learning come to life. And then I go right into practicing the beginning handwriting skills. So help the mamas get to their sweet babies where you're just pretty much drawing a line. And I'm gonna show you in my non-consumable version here in a minute what I'm gonna be doing with this. Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, but again, let's help their animals find their way home. Again, just beginning pre-writing skills. What I ended up doing is you, I have some cut and paste from the extras page. So I inserted some extra pages in the back. And so you can draw lines to help them get home. Or if you don't want to cut and paste things or if they're not ready for that, then you can skip. But I do have little uh, things that you can cut and paste here. Again, if you want it to be consumable for that. So I have other pre-writing skills, help the frogs find their way to the worms, help the animals get a drink of water, and let's make a strawberry pie. This was fun. My little ones love strawberry pie, but especially my preschooler, <laughs> it's one of her favorites. And she loves baking with me. So again, everything that is in here are things that I just know that she really does enjoy and love. So we're gonna put all the ingredients in the bowl because that's one of her favorite things to do is dump everything in together. And then I have a let's count and learn. So thank you so much for helping me make a strawberry pie. <laughs> so how many real squares do you see? Let's count them together. So one, two, three, four. So why are the other sections not squares? Because the sides are not equal. When we say equal, it means the same. So all the sides of a square are the same length, making it a special shape. So that's kind of what this whole page is a, you know, a, about. And she, of course, loves it because it has a strawberry pie. <laughs> We have a let's count section. Again, I do have the numbers associated back here on the extras page, which is right back here. Um, numbers one through five, you can cut those out and then you can match them to however many objects are here. So they get practice counting. They also get practice doing a number recognition. And then this is a let's make some shapes where they can just trace the shapes and again, review what those are. This is another fun page that I designed really for her <laughs> specifically. So how many fish do you see in the pond? Let's count them together. So for extra counting practice, cut out the fish from the extras page. So I have some fish back here. Um, right here and so you can cut them out. But what I wanted to do with this activity is if you cut them out, you can put them on like your living room floor or even the table. This is great for counting practice, but also number recognition. Um, so it's a fun activity that kind of goes with this. Even though you don't put them on the page, it's just something, just a fun hands-on thing. You have a let's count section. And then let's go on a letter hunt. She loves doing hide and seek. Like that is one of her favorite activities. She just gets lights up with joy when we play hide and seek with her. <laughs> and so let's go on a letter hunt. So what I will do with her is like, we're gonna play hide and seek with letter A. Let's see if we can find all the letter A's. And so she'll go through and like point out all the letter A's and we'll see how many we can find. This is the concept of small, smaller, and smallest. Like if you have three small things, they're still going to be a small, smaller, and smallest if they're different sizes. And so this is kind of what that concept is introducing uh, for her. And then this is another an activity that is an engaging one. It's help Mr. Beaver find sticks for his new home. So have your child verbally point and count to the 10 sticks and then cut them out from the extras page and hide them throughout your home. It will help with number recognition and will create a beautiful memory. So I have another page back here for the 10 sticks and each stick has a number on it you can take this stick and you can definitely if you want to make it consumable you can paste it over the sticks just for practice and for number recognition but um, we'll probably just keep them separate and I'll show you how I do that again um, then what comes next I also have cutouts for the ladybug um, the dragonfly so whatever comes next I do have the cutouts that you can copy and paste for that and then I just go straight into the first 10 letters of the alphabet with learning how to trace. So you can do this with paint, with crayons, with markers, whatever you would like to do. So it goes through the first 10 letters, the first 10 numbers, and then we jump into, well, this is the extras page, but we'll get to that in a minute. We have a creative storytelling page, and this is kind of like, imagine walking in a beautiful forest, what would your experience be? So what would you hear, what would you see, feel, taste, and what would you do for that one? And then for this one, help Maddie find a butterfly. So again, a beginning handwriting practice, but a little bit more advanced because you really have to follow, follow the lines and see where she's gonna go. Then I have the exact same thing where we're practicing doing the numbers and letters, only they're smaller. So at this point they should know kind of at least how to the flow goes so they can trace it and learn more about how they go together. But here's the butterfly letters for that as well. And then I have some of her favorite activities. I've shared on my channel before um, the Play-Doh mats, or it might've been Instagram, I don't remember. Anyway, um, what you do is you take some little Play-Doh and then you 
make them, you can squish them and then you can make the dots. So I recommend actually laminating these pages. So this is a bound um, copy of this, but when you guys print it out, um, you can laminate the pages that you obviously use for the dough mats. You can even laminate these, which is kind of what I did. I'll show you here in a little bit, <laughs> but this is another little Play-Doh mat. You can decorate the butterfly wings. This is the same concept. It's also a Play-Doh mat. However, it's using different uh, technique. You're not just squishing the dough onto the spots. You're needing to roll it out, which is good for them to learn how to do. You start here and it takes a lot of concentration to quote unquote, decorate the cinnamon roll. It's one of her favorite things to do is help me make cinnamon rolls. So <laughs> she, uh, I had to put that in here for her because it just was right up what, what she loves. So, and then, we go into the first page of what the second volume is going to really be about, which is all kinds of farm animals. So what animals live in the barn? Draw a circle around the animals that live in a barn or that you would normally find in a barn. So she can kind of go through that. Uh, let's go apple picking. This is going to be, I have the first three letters in this volume for this. Um, so practicing doing some more tracing, but also um, counting skills, counting the apples, counting the apples in the basket. Um, can you trace the letter A? What letter do you see? Um, what letter does the word apple start with? You know, those types of things. You're beginning to associate the sounds and things like that. So let's learn a new song. Again, a lot of these are little songs um, that you can sing together and then B how many bears do you see so you're really incorporating songs rhymes tracing counting and then let's listen to some cardinals so that's kind of the beginning of uh, the series I'm going to be doing this is the volume one I do want to show you really quickly how I am setting mine up because it looks very different <laughs> very different so I ended up making mine into a 100% non-consumable version only because I do know that with my upcoming little ones I wanted to print it off once do the work once and then just have it be we can use it over and over again. That's just my preference. However, you can print it off like this and only laminate the pages you want laminated, but um, this is just one of my favorite ways to do this particular thing. <laughs> I ended up laminating some, but I also used page protectors for a large majority of it. So we're going to flip through the same thing again. I printed this off. And again, I put most everything into page protectors. The reason why I love page protectors, for one, it's much quicker than laminating, much, 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 much quicker. And she can still take her dry erase markers and trace it, everything. And then we can just wipe it off and do it again. How I organized her binder is I laminated the pages that use like the copy and cut paste because what I'm gonna end up doing, I haven't done it yet, is I have little pieces of Velcro that I'm gonna put on each one. And then behind each page, I have in the binder here, let me get it out. I have all the little pieces needed to go on here. So I'm gonna put little Velcro on the back of these. That way she can easily do that. And it's just honestly, it's almost like a little fun busy book too. If she does want an activity, it's engaging for her to come and do while also being able to use over and over again because we've already we've already protected all the paper. This is the pre-writing skills. Again, she can um, do these, wipe it off and do it all over again. I love doing printouts non-consumable um, just for the ease of her being know to do it whenever she wants and the same thing so for the let's count I have the numbers one through five in this little folder here um, so it's everything is kind of together for what she needs for this activity so it just makes it kind of an open and go thing for when she does it and again I have everything in page protectors this is all the fish that I was talking about for the let's count and learn section so all the fish are kind of ready to go. Now I did also laminate all of the pieces. That way they're, they're going to last pretty much forever, assuming we don't lose the fish. So, <laughs> but I can just reprint them, right? So um, that's, what, that's what those are. Now you obviously don't need a large folder like this for little things like this. However, I already had a bunch of these on hand, so I thought I would utilize them this way, even though I know they're, they're big and not necessarily needed. I just thought it would keep everything everything together neatly okay so flip over here again same thing or I have all of the sticks that we're going to be needing for counting in the um, in the corresponding folder the what comes next same thing little pieces in the folder um, and then I go straight into all of the 
the letter tracing and everything else is what you've already seen but laid out a little bit differently what i'm going to do in the back here is i'm going to take these back few folders oh yeah i was going to show you i did laminate the play-doh mats as well so she can so she can play with those i'm going to go ahead and put in the back here her little rod and staff workbooks and her other little activity books that way everything is really all in one folder so when she's ready to do school on a daily on the daily basis i can just pull this out and it'll be pretty much all ready to go so that is this i'm going to try there's some things in it that i do need to correct as far as alignment things and then on the extras page um, i need to add in a blank page so when you guys print it off you don't have back to back like you're not cutting off some other thing let me show you what i mean here so i didn't add in an extra page so now when you like go to this page you would cut the other pieces off so i'm going to go back put these on the back of the file insert the extra page so when you print them off they're in the exact order that you need and there's also just some alignment things that i need to fix um, so when you guys see this this will probably go live on my blog i want to say the same week i'm going to shoot for next week to try to have it ready for you guys to download it's going to be for free so you guys can access it whenever you want or print it off um, but I just thought it'd be fun to share something like this. Anyway, that's what we're gonna be doing. I'm also gonna have on my blog, again, these only in a smaller version. So again, you can print them off on cardstock, put the glue on there with the sand, let it dry, and have your very sensory filled uh, letter tracing experience if you guys wanna do it that way. But yeah, that was, that's the Little Years Volume 1. I'm hoping to get the other one out in the midsummer, probably closer to the late summer by the time I <laughs> finish it. Um, and it will be like farm unit study themed, but it will be the next 10 letters, next 10 numbers, um, some more advanced shapes and different concepts, some smaller uh, practice handwriting and things like that while also just being very gentle and nature themed and inspired. So in this cabinet, I have all of my preschoolers, just all the fun things. So I of course have her polka dots. She has the alphabet and numbers, loves those. I have her big jar of little dinosaur counters, which I think there's some gemstones mixed in there as well, but she loves those. I have her little, um, what is this? I think it's called Woa dough something like that something anyway it's kind of of a hybrid between like a stretchy slime slash play-doh but i use these for our play-doh mats because it's very pliable it stretches and it's great for rolling out i of course have our giant jar of letters i have um a little case for just crayons and stuff for when we go to church and some puzzles and it's, this is just all of her fun like manipulative type things I think that was everything I wanted to share with you guys as far as things that we're going to be doing for preschool. I'm really excited about the Little Years volumes only because they are so specific to what she loves. And I am just so, so excited for her to do all those things. Anyway, I'm going to probably make my next video be my second graders picks or choices slash things I'm thinking about using with her. <laughs> but we'll do that and we'll talk all that and talk all the things second grade in my next video. But until then, you guys have a great day, whatever you're doing and God bless. Bye guys. Yeah.